Was there a struggle within the building, power struggle with the Jack Easterby who was brought in and we know that led to the previous general manager being fired and then uh, a power void that was filled by Bill O'Brien for the last couple of years? Is that is that something that was going down too, John? Bill O'Brien Bill O'Brien had final say on all personnel decisions. He and Easterby had disagreements, every coach and and well he's not a GM, he's executive vice president of football ops, had disagreements, but did usually I was asked if they had a falling out. If you have a falling out, to me you don't work together. And that's the way it was with Bill O'Brien and Rick Smith. In this case, they worked together, they had disagreements, they had arguments. Everybody has an argument with Bill, who has a bad temper and explosive personality, but Bill O'Brien had final say on every big decision. Nobody else in Cal McNair signed off because he believes you hire GM, you give him the money to do what he needs to do, and then you get out of the way. And if it and if it doesn't work, you get rid of it. It wasn't working this year. They got rid of it. What's the one thing if Bill O'Brien could wave a wand do you think he would change today? Other than just I think he would job. go back to the Kansas City game in which they just choked that 24-0 lead. He would not call the fake punt on fourth down at, on his 31-yard line, which backfired, led to an easy touchdown. It was the worst call of his career. Well, I mean, and then the fake punt that that uh, that that uh, succeeded it as well, that gave a short field to, to, to Kansas City. I mean, if you're saying that fourth down – call that he thought they had made it a first down and then when he found out it was fourth decided just you know in the heat of the moment to kick it and that led to you know the comeback uh, I guess that that sparked the comeback pouring gasoline on the fire was the the fake punt that that came after that but these are all X's and O's decisions I'm, I'm saying a roster I mean this team is 0-4 with no uh picks in the top two rounds next year and um you know Watson is under contract which is terrific I just keep returning to DeAndre Hopkins, and I know that we live in a fantasy football world and we look at football players and fantasy terms and same thing with trades. That one is still the ultimate head-scratcher. If you've got a guy in Watson that you know you're going to pay and you know he's your guy of the future and you know you've got somebody of DeAndre Hopkins' status at the age of 27, how in the world do you do what he did? How does that happen? How does does the owner sign on that? that Contract with three years left on it. They would have redone it with two. And I'll say this about DeAndre. He was here when they got smoked by the Chiefs in the playoffs, when they got beat 41-7 at Baltimore in regular season. But, yes, he's the go-to receiver. And I don't think if he was here – they would be any different than 0 and 4 because they're so bad on defense and can't stop anybody. But he may have made the scores closer, but I don't think he would have made a difference in an 0 4 record. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.